if you're watching this video, you are probably just starting out with Google Ads or perhaps you're struggling or you wanna get started with a very low budget, this is the video for you. I'm gonna be showing you the exact strategy that I would use if I essentially started again with Google Ads for e-commerce businesses. This is the strategy I use when I take on clients, for example, that have never run uh, Google Shopping ads before. So it's low budget, very efficient. It's not gonna waste your budget as well. Uh, this is the video for you and I'm sure you'll find it very, very useful. Very quickly, if you have any more deeper questions about Google Ads or anything sort of Shopify and e-commerce related, you can hit me up on Instagram. I'll leave a link down below. I also work one-on-one -on -one with people as well in this exact way, helping businesses build with Google Ads. So let's jump into it here. This strategy, like I said, is gonna be low budget. It is gonna be focused on Google Shopping. So that obviously implies you need your Google Merchant Center set up and in good standing. Yes, there's often issues with suspension, but I'm hoping if you're watching this video, you're, you know, you're ready to launch the ads and you're not messing around with uh, you know, broken merchant centers and things like that. So once your merchant centers all set up and ready, there are a few things you're gonna to wanna to do before you even make your Google Ads campaign. And we are gonna use Shopify for the example here in this screenshot. And this is gonna be, it's essentially ensuring the most relevant information is being given to Google about every single product that you're wanting to advertise. Now, so many people will just you know sell a product. I'm gonna use gym leggings as an example um, again. The title and the description that you're gonna be giving Google isn't just gonna be you know black gym leggings. You want a ton more of different terms related to that uh, exact product in here. And with Shopify, on each Shopify product page, within your admin, all you need to do is essentially scroll right to the bottom of your Shopify product editor and you'll see this section here. And you wanna include up to 150 characters in the title and up to 320 or so in the product, in the meta description here, should I say. Now, yes, it says up to 70 and up to 160, but Google Merchant Center for the title, they'll use up to 150 characters and then up to 320 for the description. So I essentially ignore these characters here. Like I said, 150 for the title, 320 for the description. And you're probably wondering, okay, how am I gonna cram a load of terms or, you know, essentially what am I gonna be putting in these sections here? And that is where you wanna go ahead and use Google's free tool, which is the Keyword Planner. So if we jump over to that here on my ad account really quick, and I'm gonna again uh, use Jim Leggings as the example, you can just find this on Google by going into Tools and then Keyword Planner under the Planning section here. But like I said, it's so important that you include as many relevant terms for your products as possible. You don't wanna be selling gym leggings and then have like men's shorts within this section here because it's completely irrelevant. It has to be focused and targeted for the exact product you are doing this for. So again, if we search gym leggings here, it's gonna give you a ton of different search terms related to the product. It'll also give you the estimated volume. Now, if you're on a newer Google ad account, it might not give you numbers this specific. It sometimes might say one to 10K a month or 10K to 100K searches a month or something along those lines. But either way, it's gonna give you a good idea on what is the sort of most popular search terms. Now, be careful with things like Gymshark and branded uh, terms. You cannot be using essentially trademarked uh, business or brand names within your titles for obvious reasons. So as, as tempting as it would be to put this in because it has a ton of search volume, you can't do it. Google will reject it or Gymshark can come in and take your ads down or potentially worse. So do not be doing that. You want to include things like squat proof leggings, workout leggings, yoga, athletic, you know, anything that you feel as if that is relevant to this particular product you wanna be putting in there. So you want up to 150 characters in the title. Google will prioritize the title over the description, but the description, again, is a very good place to you know include some extra terms. So once you've done your title, once you've done your description with the help of Keyword Planner, you'll hit save. You can either do this within Shopify and then ensure this title and description is pushed through to Merchant Center, perhaps through the Google Shopping Feed app that you're using within Shopify, but now you can actually edit the title and description directly on Merchant Center as well. So if you're not quite sure how to do it on Shopify, just jump into your Merchant Center, click the product, and you'll be able to edit the title and description through Merchant Center as well. Okay, once you've done this for all the products you're wanting to advertise, 
you want to then go ahead and focus on making the campaign like i said at the start of the video standard shopping is where it's going to be if you've got a low budget even to be honest one of my businesses is 90 percent standard shopping with maybe one pmax campaign currently active standard shopping last year in 2024 was incredible it outperformed performance max for my own businesses i handle clients accounts i see people i mentor as well each account behaves very differently so just because something at scale works for me like the standard shopping it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work on another account another good example my other business my usa business is very p max heavy whereas the uk side of things like i just mentioned is very heavy on standard shopping both running at scale so that just goes to show you you need to test essentially because each account will behave very differently and a quick side note if you are watching this and you perhaps have a more complex business you know if you are heavily dtc direct to customer and you essentially are just a shopify store with products then this is the way to go but if you but if you offer perhaps services as well as products for example interior design if you have higher ticket products that perhaps offer or you know that perhaps need um you know one-to-one -one phone calls type thing to sort of close the sale that's when you're going to probably want performance max or search campaigns to run alongside but if you've got lower ticket products and like i said you're just a shopify store essentially starting out with your products standard shopping is definitely the way to go so if we jump over to google ads very quickly here and i'll quickly go through the standard shopping campaign creation process it is the most straightforward campaign to create you just want to hit sales you want to make sure your conversion tracking is all set up properly and then you want to hit shopping at some point here it's going to prompt you to switch to performance max but you want to make sure you stick with standard shopping you want to make sure your merchant center account is selected it will take you to then this next screen where you can simply name your campaign standard shopping because this is low budget and because this is sort of a beginner friendly strategy i would only recommend making the one standard shopping campaign for now uh, and i'll show you in a minute because you'll be able to segment this campaign if you have a variety of product categories you can still separate those categories within this singular campaign there's no need to have at this stage multiple campaigns for each category Yes, that's something you do later on when you're scaling, but for now, let's just focus on one single campaign. It does offer some additional settings here. I never touch these. In terms of bid strategy, this is incredibly important. So if you've got a brand new Google Ad account and you're watching this, or you've got an account with barely any conversion data, it is not gonna allow you to select the target ROAS bid strategy. If you do, you'll enter you know, 100%, and once you go through this creation, process it will bring you back to this screen and essentially say there's not enough conversion data on the account to use this bid strategy so if that is you maximize clicks is my preference over manual cpc i also usually set a maximum cost per click around a dollar or a pound depending on which country you're in just to ensure that it will spend its budget but it will also ensure that you're not going to be spending every now and then on a click that's perhaps four or five times this amount because yes those clicks are perhaps very high converting at scale but when you're running a low budget for example if you're running this at 50 pound a day and you get a five pound click that's 10 percent of your budget for that day on one single click it's really not an efficient way to run this so i always put a maximum cpc cap when i opt for the max click speed strategy and I'll talk back in a minute about the t strategy, but this is a setup you're gonna want if you've not got enough conversion data within the account. Okay, so if your account does allow you to use the target ROAS bid strategy, great. You're essentially skipping out a phase of this setup because the goal with maximized clicks is literally to let it run and gather enough conversion data for then you to switch over to the target ROAS bid strategy. That is, ex that is essentially the point of running maximized clicks within this whole strategy. Let it run, let it gather conversion data so you can eventually switch to target ROAS. So once you're here, if you can start on this, great. You're Like I said, you've skipped out that step of running maximized clicks. In terms of what to set your target ROAS at, you could do this in two ways. There's two approaches you can use here. Like I said, each account will behave differently. So it's something you might need to test but I'll tell you what's been working for me as well recently. I've been running at a much lower target ROAS simply because running at a higher target ROAS of 350%, for example, I've seen days where budget doesn't even spend half of what I've set it as. So if a campaign has 
a 300 pound a day budget at this target ROAS, I sometimes see it, you know, it might spend 80 pound out of that 300 pound budget, whereas I'm wanting to scale. So dropping this target ROAS to 100%, for example, almost guarantees that daily spend is gonna be achieved. Google's gonna allow your products to rank higher. It's gonna, yes, in turn, make your CPC higher. So if you've got a bit more budget to play with here, this is probably the approach for you having a lower target ROAS, even if it's 150%, you can go 50%. I'd say anything below a 150% target ROAS is what I class as a low T ROAS to essentially make the most of those higher positions in the search, you know, higher CPCs, but obviously you're gonna be getting better quality traffic. But if your budget is a bit more limited, then you can go in with a slightly higher target ROAS. Perhaps you wanna start at your break even, you could start at just above your break even so you can almost not guarantee profit, but that is the goal you're gonna be telling Google that you're wanting. It's not something you necessarily need to overthink, but I guess the decision you're making here in terms of what target ROAS to set really is down to what sort of budget you currently have to play with. So for the sake of this video and the position that I would be in, I would set this at 100% target ROAS. And as it's low budget, we're just gonna go at 50 pound a day. If you can afford more, great, but there's no need to squeeze yourself and rinse yourself dry within a few days. Ensure you have enough budget to let this thing run for a few weeks. You don't need to worry about customer acquisition and campaign priority, um, especially you know the customer acquisition. That's something you only might want to play around with when you're running at scale. Um, I like to exclude search partners. Uh, and another very important thing, you wanna be making sure that you get your country correctly selected here, in this case, United States. And of course, uh, the good old thing here, make sure you're selecting people in or regularly in the included locations. Once you've done that, hit create and it is almost good to go. Now, once you've made your campaign, you can go into the ad group section here. Once the campaign is freshly created, it is gonna essentially include all of your products, but this is where you'll be able to separate your products, perhaps per category, price, any way you want to, you can have separate ad groups for each category. For example, if you run a fitness clothing company, you might have men's uh, gym wear in one section, you might have women's in another. You might need a higher target ROAS to break even for men's wear, for example, so you would be able to set here a higher target return on ad spend for that collection. And essentially the way you choose the products that you want in each of these ad groups, you just click the ad group. These are obviously my product IDs, but at the bottom here, it will start and only say this section here, everything else in all products. You just wanna find the pen icon somewhere on this column here. You click the pen icon, you wanna subdivide by item ID, and you'll then be able to go through and essentially tick each product that you want in that specific ad group. Rinse and repeat if you want these multiple ad groups. And once you've done that, make sure you turn off the everything else in all products, which you don't want turned on because you only want the products you've selected to show. That is essentially it. That is the setup process for a standard shopping campaign. It's very straightforward, but what we do after this is arguably more important than what we've just done already. Okay, so let's go through my process and what I would do once this campaign has launched. You wanna be keeping a close eye on it every day, just tracking the clicks, the cost per clicks, the, the average daily spend just so you are then familiar with almost what to expect on a daily basis. And then that way, if something goes wrong, you'll be able to identify it um, easily, essentially. Um, I can't spell clearly. Um, next up, you may have heard about this before and, pay, and I've, I've said this before previously as well. Don't get too caught up in the daily keyword management, you know, the search term exclusions. And a great way to look at this, if you've done your titles, your descriptions and everything within your product feed properly, like we spoke about at the start of the video, you'll find that you're not gonna be getting many irrelevant searches for your products because you've ensured that setup process before you've launched your campaign has been done correctly and you've ensured each product is fully optimized to the best of, you know, your ability really and of course as you go and scale these things you might start to test different titles for your products but at this early stage if you've done that properly you'll find there'll be very little ad spend going towards irrelevant terms of course like i said as you begin to spend some irrelevant terms might need excluding but don't waste your time excluding search terms that have had no clicks and maybe one or two impressions because 
that could take hours and it is a complete waste of time. I usually only look at search terms that have had a lifetime uh, of five clicks or more. I then assess, you know, okay, if a, if a search terms had 10 clicks, for example, and I perceive that to be irrelevant, I would then go ahead and exclude it, but I'm not looking at search terms that have had, you know, one impression. It's just, like I said, a complete waste of time and not something you want to be wasting time on, quite frankly. And just to reiterate, if you're on a new account or you had to start with the maximize clicks bid strategy, simply let it run. Don't make too many changes, let it run. Bring in those conversions, even if it's at break even, even if it's at a slight loss. Your goal essentially here is just to ensure you gather the conversion data so you can then switch to the target ROAS bid strategy. And again, repeating what I said earlier, if you can run T ROAS from the start, great, you skip this whole step here. A couple of very common scenarios you'll find yourself in after a few weeks or a month or two perhaps is, okay, the campaign is spending its daily budget and it is achieving its target ROAS, great. That's the best position you can find yourself in. You can either increase the budget and let it keep spending and let it keep spending, or if you're more profit driven and you don't necessarily want that scale or perhaps can't handle the scale, then you can increase the target ROAS instead, very gradually, but those are the two things you can do in that situation there. Another very common situation is gonna be, okay, the campaign isn't spending its full budget, and essentially the reason for that is your target ROAS is simply too high. So like the example I gave earlier, if you set a 400% target ROAS with very little data, the likelihood is your campaign won't be spending its budget. So just pull back that target ROAS, even if you have to pull it back to 200%, for example, let the conversion data build, let the momentum grow, and then gradually over time, you can gradually keep increasing that target ROAS to where you know the, the most optimal point where you don't necessarily see a massive decline in um, spend. So that is essentially the process, my beginner friendly strategy for standard shopping. Just one final point that I wanna go over, I've made tons of videos on this before. You could have an amazing Google Ads strategy like this one here, but if your website sucks and it looks terrible, people aren't gonna buy. So you really do need to have a good website and a few things that you can focus on to improve the results of your Google Ads are gonna be these things here, product imagery, you've got customer reviews, a fast website, website congruency, which means it's a concise layout that matches on every page. You know, I've seen websites where the home page and the, the background is black with a different font and then the product page is a white background with a different font and it looks a mess. So spend some time on your website, CRO, conversion rate optimization, because that will have a massive positive impact on your Google ads as well. Um, you know, I'm not going into detail on these because like I said, I've made a ton of videos on these in the past. If you've got any questions or you want my direct help one-on-one, -on -one, then please drop me a message on Instagram, link in the description down below. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.